find a basis for and write down the dimension of the subspace W which is equal to the span of these four vectors which look like they're in R4. Well let's see what I've been asked to do. I've been asked to find a basis and the dimension so I need to know what those words mean in order to actually answer the question. So let me find the definitions and write them down. Here we go. A basis for W is a set of vectors in W which one span W and two are linearly independent and the dimension of W is the number of vectors in a basis for W. Well that must be why it says write down the dimension because once I've got the basis I can just write down the dimension because I can just count how many vectors I've got. Okay, so how am I going to find a basis? Well they have to span W. I've already got four vectors that span W. The only thing that would need the only thing I'd need to make them a basis would be for them to be linearly independent according to that definition. So I should just see if they're linearly independent. If they're not, I'll figure out what to do afterwards. So normally to tell if things are linearly independent, I put them as columns in a matrix and I row reduce. And if I get free variables, that makes them dependent. And if I don't get free variables, that makes them independent. So let me put them as columns in a matrix and row reduce and I'll need a new page to have enough space I reckon. So I've got 1, 2 thirds, 0, minus 5, minus 3, minus 2, 0, 15, 3, 0, minus 1, a half, 7 over 2, 1 third, minus 1, minus 2. Right, well first I'm going to get rid of those nasty fractions so that I can work with whole numbers instead. So my new row 1 is 2 of row 1. My new row 2 is 3 of row 2. Um, well I think in this third row I'll multiply by minus 1 so I don't have to deal with so many negatives. My new row 3 is minus row 3 and my new row 4 is 2 of row 4. Okay, so I've got 2 minus 6, 6, 7, 2 minus 6, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and minus 10, 30, 1, minus 4. Okay, so I want there to be the first column of the identity here with a 1 in this spot and zeros below. I can get the zeros below now uh, by just subtracting row 2 from row 1 and 5 of row 1 onto row 2. So my new row 2 is row 2 minus row 1 and my new row 4 is row 4 plus 5 of row 1. So I haven't changed row 1 and I haven't changed row 3. So 2 minus 2 is 0, minus 6 minus minus 6 is 0, 0 minus 6 is minus 6, 1 minus 7 is minus 6. And on the bottom row, minus 10 plus 5 times 2 is 0, min 30 plus 5 times minus 6 is 0, 1 plus 5 times 6 is 31, minus 4 plus 5 times 7 is minus 4 plus 35, which is also 31. Okay. Well, 
column next, I would like there to be the second column of the identity here, but I can't produce that because I've got a zero in the position where I want the one. So I want the second column of the identity here, which means I want a one in this position here. And well, I can get that one by swapping rows. So let's do that. My new row two and row three is my old row three and row two. So two minus six, six, seven, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, minus six, minus six, zero, zero, thirty one, thirty one. And now I can get the zeros above and below that one. So my new row one is row one minus six of row two. My new row 3 is row 3 plus 6 of row 2 and my new row 4 is row 4 minus 31 of row 2 so I haven't changed row 2 row 1 becomes 0 1 this row becomes just 0 0 and so does this last row well, next I'd be looking for uh, the next column of the identity here and I can't do that because I've got a zero where I want that one and zero is below it so that's pretty much it I suppose I could divide by this two to get a one where I want but technically I don't really need to because I'm only looking for the columns that could be pivots um, and the ones that are free variables and I can see that now actually See, this one is where the first column of the identity will end up, and this is my second column of the identity. So the other two columns must be free variables, so I have free variables, and therefore they're linearly dependent. Well, what am I supposed to do now? Well, I do need some vectors that are linearly independent, and the vectors that turned into these two, this original vector here and this original vector here, if I just had them in my columns, then I would just have this at the end and there wouldn't be any free variables. So those two actually are linearly independent. So they could be a basis as long as I was sure that they spanned it. The other two columns would have to be linear combinations of these two. Because if they weren't, they'd be linearly independent as well and I wouldn't have got free variables in those spots. So since those two original ones that I haven't boxed must be combinations of the others, that means that everything is a linear combination of just those two, so those two must span my whole subspace. So those two must be my basis. So I can write that down now. Uh, columns that become pivot columns are the basis. So a basis for W is 1, 2 thirds, 0, minus 5, and 3, 0, minus 1, a half. And since I've got two of them, the dimension must be 2. Therefore, the dimension of W is 2.